Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is for you, welcome to the gathering. And that's the beauty of the gathering. It's here for when you need it most. That means that these are pre-recorded, many of them. And so a little bit later in the service, you're going to hear from the Reverend Anthony Wiseman. And you're probably saying, didn't he leave? Did we just celebrate him becoming a senior minister in Darien, Connecticut? Yes, we did. But we recorded this before he left, and now we get to hear a word from Anthony. And we're excited about that. Often in church circles, we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a way of saying that this is a day that God has given us. God, help us make the most of it. And one of the ways God does that is when we come together like this, and focus on what is noble and true and beautiful and inspiring, and may this service be inspiring to you. You call me out upon the Great unknown where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep. My faith will stand, and I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace I am yours, you are mine I'm mine abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now and I
time everybody I will call upon your name I will call upon your name keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise so rest in your embrace I am yours A reading from the book of Romans. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church at Centrea, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints and help her in whatever she may require from you, for, for she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, who work with me in Christ Jesus and who risked their necks for my life and to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Apanitus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives, who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachus. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my relative Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Trifunea and Trifosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. And greet his mother, a mother to me also. Greet all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I really hope that uh, the Mediacom team weren't uh, having the scripture reading kind of scroll along the screen as I was reading it because you'll notice that I just sort of gave up on the names at some point and s skip right to the last work. I, I've, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. I gave it my all. But, uh, uh, woof, I need to go back to take not only Greek but Latin, I guess. Um, well, hey, so... I think there's something sort of James Bond about this, about, about me recording a message for you that you will only receive after I'm gone. I, I have no secrets or shocking revelations to share. I, I promise I am not three or four martinis in here. And, and so far as I know, the video of this sermon will not self-destruct within 60 seconds of you watching it. But still, you know, the now in which I am speaking to you, it is, it is not the now in which you are hearing me, not by a long shot. The sermon will go live, I think, about a month and a half after we have said our last farewells. I will be in my first, uh, my first weeks uh, of my ministry in Darien, Connecticut, as Michael mentioned. I, I imagine that I will be energized and exhausted all at once. Uh, probably I'll be overwhelmed. Probably I'll be having a lot of fun because this job, being a pastor, it, it's actually pretty fun. It is a joy. No doubt I will miss you. I will meet new people, and some of them will remind me of some of you, and that will be wonderful and sad in all the ways that these things are. And so that's me, but, but how about you? How are you? What's been going on with you? The scriptures say that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And I think something like that must be true for those of us who are living through the collapse of the space-time continuum we call the COVID-19 pandemic, right? The month or so that I've been gone, it has to count for like an eon in COVID time. And so I have no idea 
what will have happened in New York City or in the world in the time between my now and your now. I hope that there's been some joy and some healing, uh, some good stuff in life for you. I trust that that will be true. There'll be good stuff in the life of the church. I hope there's been mending, mending of the brokenness in the world, even in just a small way. I hope the crocus were beautiful. But here we are, together, sharing together in a mystic, sweet communion that spans past, present, and future, here and now, this world and the world beyond this world even. And probably this is actually more of, a, more of an Apostle Paul than a James Bond sort of thing. I'm, I'm thinking of the letters Paul wrote, the letters Paul wrote which make up no small part of our New Testament. Of course, there was an email or air, air mail back then, so if a letter was going to make its way from point A to point B, it was going to do so the, the older than old-fashioned way, by hand, in the hand of someone who would have to brave storms at sea and, and who would risk being robbed on the road or held and shaken down by a band of corrupt soldiers who, who would have to maybe turn off the path if, if bad weather made it unpassable, who would know hunger and thirst, whose, whose feet would bleed. It might take months or even longer for, for a letter Paul wrote to make its way to the ones for whom he intended it. And who knows what could transpire in the time between Paul's putting seal to papyrus and then, and then someone in Corinth or in Thessalonica or in Rome or wherever hearing his words read aloud to the church. The conflict that Paul could have written to address, well, it could, could well have been resolved by then. And like, like in a game of whack-a-mole, a whole other one could have since arisen. And by the way, that's exactly what happens in the first letter to the Corinthians, which is actually several different letters of his, kind of out of sync, out of order, pieced together. In any event, Paul did the best he could. By God, he did better than the best he could. And his letters, though, again, they're out of sync and they're always lagging a little behind, maybe like this. They were bound into our Bibles and we, we still look to them today. Maybe the fact that they were never written and read in quote-unquote real time, maybe that gives them something of their sense of timelessness. So as I'm thinking about the letters Paul wrote, one particular passage in one particular letter comes to mind, the, the 16th chapter of his letter to the Roman Christians. And I've always loved this chapter. I've always loved this chapter because, you know, Paul wrote about many important things, many gravely serious things, many urgent things. He wrote about grace. He wrote about how our good decisions and our, our good deeds, how, you know, they're good and all, but, but they aren't so good for getting God to love us more because God already loves us as much as is possible. God wrote about the mystery of prayer. God wrote about the mystery of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love never ends. He wrote about what happens when we're baptized. He wrote about what happens when we come to the Lord's table. He wrote about what happens when we die. In this chapter, Paul wrote about something no less important. He wrote about someone. Actually, he wrote about a number of someones whom he pastored and worked with and thanks God for and loves and misses. He wrote, say hey to Phoebe for me. Say hey to Prisca and Aquila for me. Say, say hi to Mary for me. Say hi to Andronicus and to Junia for me. In this chapter, we don't see Paul, the brilliant theologian, going on about grace. We don't see Paul, the great apostle, even. We, we see Paul, the person who has cared for other people and who was sad when he had to say goodbye to them and who thinks fondly of them still. Now, their relationships are not the same, but even after their goodbyes, their relationships endure in each of their hearts, certainly, and in God's own heart. 
Their relationships rest with all relationships that ever were and ever will be in that mystic, sweet communion that spans past, present, and future, here and now, this world and the world beyond this world even. His now and their now are are not the same, but everything they shared together and who they are for one another exists forever in that great everlasting now of God's eternity. And so, so too with us, with you and with me, with everything we've shared together and who we are for one another. It has been a gift It has been really fun. You know, it's been a joy to serve you and and to be your pastor. It's been life-changing for me to care for you and to care about you. I love you. I miss you already. I really do wish you all the best so well, every blessing on and on. If I could say hi, you, hi you, hi you, hi you, down the line, I would do it like Paul, but I've just got enough time to say thank you. Thank you for all the ways you've loved me and and changed me. Thank you for who you are to me, who you are for the city, who you are for the world. I thank you, and I thank God for you. And if you would let me, I just want to pray for you one last time and bless you one last time. So let us pray. Oh God, I thank you for these good years and for the leg of life's journey that we have walked along on together. I thank you for the sweetness of the memories we have made together and for the ways we have learned and grown together. For the miracles of change we have midwifed together. I thank you for your presence with us when there was laughter and when there were tears in seasons of struggle and in seasons of rejoicing. Lead this congregation from rejoicing to rejoicing, from strength to strength, from faithfulness to faithfulness. Let your blessing be upon them. May they change in all the ways you call them to change and in all the ways the world and the city need for them to change. And may they hold fast to all that you call them to hold fast to and to to all that the world and the city need them to hold fast to. May they be bold in speaking what is true. May they be brave and daring in doing what is right. May they take big risks, may they make big and wonderful mistakes, and may they take big risks again. May they rise to meet the calling of this and every moment. Through Christ I pray. Amen. now come to this place in the service that we call communion. And as we do, Anthony, we're mindful of your words and thank you for those. Know that we are praying for you too. We're going to deeply miss you, but also we'll support you in prayer as you enter this new adventure as a senior minister. As we gather around these elements, I wonder what they mean to people. I mean, People who just pass by, you might not know this, but if I just turn this direction, I'm looking out on Fifth Avenue and it's somebody stopping and looking in right now. And when they look in, they see juice and bread and probably wonder, ordinary elements, what do they mean? But we all know that we have things that we hold on to that if people were to see mean nothing to anyone else. But for us, they conjure up a deep remembering of someone or something. I know I have a little box in my closet and it's the things from my grandfather who I never met. I just heard stories about him and knew my dad had this little box filled with little trinkets from his life and he passed them on to me. 
To anyone else, they're just old stuff. But to me, they speak of family and heritage and love. And so too, people could pass by and see just this ordinary bread and juice and think there's nothing here. But for us, because of faith, it's a deep remembering, a sacred remembering of God's great love for us shown in Jesus. And so now we come together to remember. Just as Jesus called together his disciples before he died on the cross and rose again, and he wanted to let them know with these simple elements that you can always remember God's love for you. And he began by giving thanks and then taking ordinary bread and breaking it and say, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after they had finished eating, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Remembrance of God's great love for each and every one of us. And so now you're invited to the table to remember. Remember deeply of God's great love. If you need to, you can simply pause whatever you're watching. If you don't have elements, go and find a piece of bread or a cracker, a little juice or a little wine. And then we come together to take these elements. So I invite you to join me in celebrating communion together. We take this bread and remember that this is the bread of life. This is the cup of salvation. Please pray with me. Oh God, as we remember, may we feel your love, experience your love, and believe in your love, no matter what we face. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So it just occurred to me, this is kind of fun, because I'm not technically your pastor anymore, and I still get to ask you for money right now. And, and, when, <laughs> and it's not going to make its way to me, I promise. And that's what's really fun about it is because I'm going to say jump on, you know, when you're online there, jump in that little make a donation button. And, and, and it's, it's fun because you can trust that there's not a shadow of self-interest to my telling you to do this. I'm, I'm telling you to do it to give because it's good for you and because it feels good, and because it will make you more joyful and more generous as you move through the world. Give because it'll make your heart grow three sizes through whatever little Grinch constraint it's under like it does mine, and, and, and give because it'll make a difference in the world, uh, not because it pays my salary or anyone else's. Give because it's good for you, for heaven's sake. So that's a fun thing to be able to say. Uh, just do it. it it's, it's fun. You'll like it, I promise. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Oh.
on my own Just let your spirit guide And let your word abide now Speak to my heart, Lord Speak to me Give me a holy word If I can If I can hear from you Then I'll know what I know what I won't do. go alone I won't go alone Said I'll never go on my own Never go on my own I'll let your spirit guide And let your word abide 